There are several lakes on the Colorado River and Lake Mead being the biggest of them all, Lake Powell being the second biggest. And we're going to be talking about how Lake Powell affects Lake Mead and why is that, you may be asked. Well, stick around and I'll show you right after this. You may be asking yourself why Lake Mead continues to fall the way it is. Every day there's a historic low. Every day there's a new problem going on at Lake Mead. And the problem at Lake Mead is that they continue to allow water to go out. And they say by the time that they start releasing more water at Lake Powell, that Lake Mead could possibly fall another 12 feet. As Lake Powell borrows water from all the reservoirs upstream, as they start getting a rapid increase, at Lake Powell, Lake Mead continues to fall because they're holding back a lot more water to make the lake start to rise. They are borrowing water for the next year in hopes that there's more rain coming. So they are tapping their resources from upstream at places like Blue Mesa, Flaming Gorge, Lake Navajo, and they are letting that water come to Lake Powell to rise it rapidly. In the meantime, they're also holding back water that runs down to Lake Mead. Therefore, Lake Mead continues to pump water out like they have been to give the reservoirs downstream that they're opted to do. They are opted to give 9 million gallons of water every year to downstream. So far, they have released 66% of that 9 million acre feet that they're supposed to be getting out. Now, that means that they have released so far 6,008,048 acre feet. This means that they have to release 2,991,502 acre feet minimum. Now, sometimes they release more than the minimum, and they have been known to do this. Meanwhile, up at Lake Powell, which is upriver from them, they're still in water from Flaming Gorge, Blue Mesa, and Lake Navajo, and they're only required to release 7.5 million, and so far they've released 4,414,869 acre feet. So this is exactly why Lake Mead is at a low for the water year of 19.83 feet and down 25.65 feet from one year ago, and Lake Powell, on the other hand, although it's down 20. 9.09 feet for one year ago it's actually up 8.8 feet from the water low as that was the date that they started to hold back more water now your inflows at lake powell are 15,249 but your outflows are 9,106 so that is an increase of 0 0.7 in a 24 hour period lake powell was down like at 23 percent of capacity but now it's back up to almost 26 percent currently at 25.9 percent so this is why the lake is rapidly rising because they decided that they are going to borrow water from flaming gorge blue mesa and navajo upstream overall this is a gamble because if you don't have a heavy snowpack next year then the lake will drop further and they're trying to stay within that 35 foot buffer and that is why they all of a sudden decided that Lake Powell is more important than anything else to sustain power. They decided to borrow water from upriver. Those reservoirs will be able to hold back more water next year and Lake Powell will drop further if they don't receive some sort of miracle in record precipitation over the next 12 months. They need a lot more snow. They need a lot more rain. And if they don't get this, it's Katie bar the door for Lake Powell. It's a chain reaction. Action. Lake Mead will be next. Lake Mojave will be after that. Lake Havasu will eventually be down the line. So that is why everything is important. So Lake Mead, on the other hand, it continues to fall. And a day, Lake Mead is at a level of 1,048.08. And the level is 180.92 feet below full pool of 1,200. Think about this. It's literally almost 19 feet away from being 200 foot down from the high where in 1983 we were 
were above the 1,229 mark, and that's only happened ever because you guys are, live in a desert. That's part of the problem. The other problem is they release water, and people are like, well, they're just releasing it out. The majority of the water that is going out of Lake Mead is for fields and farms in the desert. All that water is being sucked out, and it's going to fields and farms to produce plenty of produce for the world. And that water is being distributed all across the world, and it's just sad. And not only that, but the other 30% is used by residents. Out of the 40 million people that are using it, a lot of those are being used by the residents. Now, some people will say that the golf courses are being used. One gentleman on my channel says that he can vow for places in Arizona that they don't use water from Lake Mead because they don't have no grass to use. So that is what's going on there. And it's just a chain reaction. And then you go like to Lake Havasu. It's full. And the reason why it's full is because it's the last line of defense. That's why they always keep it above full. And that's why they keep Mojave above full. It's the last line of defense before they would be completely dry. At some point, if, if this drought continues and the snowfall is just average at best, this is the best you're going to do. It's going to continue to fall. They went off of the wrong numbers. There was plenty of water in the reservoirs prior to this, and they just said, well, we got plenty of water, but they didn't look at the cycles that happen. Sometimes the levels are really high. Back in 2000, the level was really high, and then later they were down. Now they're way down. So, But it can change in a hurry. Just remember that 1977, they were in a pretty severe drought and by 1983 they were back up so it's bound to go back up sooner or later it has to it's just will we see it some scientists say it never will recover and i call that hogwash i do believe it will recover at some point and i'll be here to see it i'm pretty sure it will be within the next 10 years i'm almost sure of it but until then we continue to follow the lake and watch it fall every day you guys have a blessed day happy memorial day don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff stuff. We'll see you on the next one. I'm camping. Have a good day.